I'm above the Celeb Sea, a stretch of tropical water situated between Malaysia and the Philippines. I can't land on the island! Just trees and cliffs! The beach is too narrow and the reef will cut me to shreds. I'm heading for deep water. Ready for impact! Gotta fly it all the way in. <sighs> now to get clear of this rig and make for the shore. Successful survival involves four basic principles. Protection, systems to assist your rescue, water and food. Your first priority is shelter. Yeah, and instinctively, that feels a nice place to make camp. I might be able to use this for a camp. Built like a tree house across these two boughs. Also, I've seen so much driftwood around. It's going to make building it quite easy. It's low tide now, but when it comes in, the sea will be right under my shelter. It's actually what the indigenous people do on a lot of these islands around here. I build the houses above the water. Okay, let's get out there and then drag the others up. In the book Robinson Crusoe, Crusoe spent his first night sleeping in the boughs of a huge tree. And that's just going to give me a good base platform. If it's good enough for Crusoe, then it's good enough for me. That's probably enough, you know. Easy as that. Good. Water is my next concern. There could be a freshwater spring on one of the neighbouring islands. If there is, I'm going to try and find it. If I find a few of these, I can make a simple paddle board. The other island looks a mile or so offshore. A small raft will help me get there. Well, that island's not far. Definitely worth a paddle and a bit of an exploratory mission. See if there's anything different over there. OK, let's get paddling. We'll leave this here. We've got to see what we find on this island. There are clear signs of animals up here. The game trail has been worn along the ridge. Wildlife appears to be using this as their thoroughfare. Look, actually, see that print, see that? I'm going to get you. Hoof mark. And that gives me an idea. This is how it works sometimes. You're out looking for one thing, and then another opportunity presents itself. So you've got the island, and then you've got this clear top ridge that runs the whole length of it. Maybe if I make like a brushwood fence either side of it, it can act as a funnel. And if I come around here, steadily drive and herd any wildlife through a choke point and that's a place to set a trap. As long as they're not frightened, wildlife approaching a barrier will choose the path of least resistance. You can see this fence, both sides like an arrow just guiding any game down to this killing zone build a traditional Malaysian trap used by indigenous people to catch small mammals. And this just loops under there and just slips into that. And this rope I scavenge from the beach will make the perfect noose. OK, let's just trigger this so make sure it all works properly. Stand back. Animal comes along, stands on the pressure plate. Caught. The idea is that we don't startle any animal. We just want to gently corral them along the island. Sometimes you just got to stop 
and watch. What you're looking for is small flickers of movement. That's what gives game away. Straight down. You're rolling on this. No, straight down the hill. See the back end of him, black back end. It's a pig. See him? Towards our funnel, come on. Amongst the indigenous people of Borneo, the bearded pig is a sought after source of food. And the rainforests and mangroves of Southeast Asia are perfect habitat. Okay, let's keep moving. Thunder hasn't phased him. He's still moving towards a trap. Look, 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 look. Go on. Go on one step. Go on. We got him. Just go around the back trotter there. Just let him settle for a second. Stay there, stay there. Survival's not pretty, and this is something I do not enjoy. But a big part of survival is food. Okay, it's getting back to camp. Wild pig is an important food source for indigenous people. A big kill can last a family for weeks. Now to leave what I've called Pig Island and head back to the base. I'll be glad to see solid ground. Sharks can smell blood over a mile away. When you're tired and in remote situations like this, your fears can sometimes run away with you. Made me work for it, this pig. In these humid conditions, the carcass won't last long. Before I butcher it, I'm going to build a simple rack above a fire and preserve the meat by frying it. This pig will provide food for some time. But nourishment isn't the only advantage to be gained from a big kill like this. And in the world so much of an animal goes to waste. But in survival, you don't want to waste anything. There are around 60 feet of guts in a pig like this. Once cleaned and dried, I can use it as cordage. Animal stomachs have traditionally been used as water bottles, which could be a lifesaver for anyone stuck out here. It smells of vomit, but once it's dried out, that's going to hold at least two pints of water in that. Now that the fire is established, I can start drying the meat by smoking it. Bacteria needs moisture to survive. This process will stop bacteria spreading and create something similar to jerky. Now it's not too hot, it's not going to cook it. There's enough smoke and heat to dry that out. And I just cover it. it. Might take a couple of days, but I'm not going to preserve all of it. Some is for supper tonight. This for me, it's not about this meal. It's actually about what the pig can give me long term. By remembering that, and I can get over finding the actual kill itself so difficult. Prime pig meat. Actually, it doesn't taste that great. But a full stomach puts fuel back in your tank and can hopefully help you get a good night's sleep. Kind of see the line of the reef all the way around the island. It's that pale colour about a couple of hundred feet out. And that's why I'm going to go and try and get something. Two million square miles of what is supposed to be the richest marine environment on the planet looks a little sparse from here. Probably a good place to start diving here. Save me both time and energy getting down to the seabed. The indigenous people rely on the reef so much that they train themselves to be expert free divers, learning to hold their breath for up to five minutes at a time. They can dive to depths of 40 feet, foraging and spearing fish on the ocean floor. Over 2,000 species of fish share this reef, some feeding off the coral or using it as protection for other fish. The 
crayfish has wedged itself under some rocks, which could make it really hard for me to get him out. This fella's not giving up. We're out of fight. With incredible speed, when it tail flips away. Swimming backwards, crayfish can keep their eyes locked on their enemy. I had him! Broke one of the prongs! And literally just went like lightning straight past my head and gone. Oh, so close. My eyes are really starting to sting now, but after all this effort, I'm not going to let this meal get away. Crayfish like this would be quite a prize, but with one prong down and burning lungs, I'm finding it hard to make any impression on his armor plating. As with most things, perseverance brings its rewards. <gasps> what great fish! Absolutely flipping brilliant! <clears throat> Let's get him back to the shore before he escapes out of these prongs. I love crayfish. <laughs> After so much time underwater, I can't wait to tuck into one of my favourite seafood dishes. It's hard work, the free diving. But it's also really fun. You know, I love, I love that sort of thing. I do so much for it back home with my kids, having competitions who can hold their breath for the longest underwater. Okay, it should be ready. Look at that, it's a whole tail. Power, muscle, and great energy. Meals in the wild don't come much better than this. Energy giving and tastes great too. Happy bear face. Bear grill. 